come here today as a city councilman from Ann Arbor, which with the University of Michigan uh, is a knowledge base in a state with a very troubled economy, suffering from the loss of manufacturing to places like China. Thus, I see both historical problems and a hope for the future. Uh, I'm also a blogger and a software entrepreneur, and I've been concerned about peace, justice, and equal opportunity since the 1960s. In Michigan, America's home of manufacturing, globalization has hit us hard. The U.S. used to have a productive advantage, but that's because we had backhoes while third world countries were using shovels. Today, those countries have invested in technology, often bought from American companies, education for their workforce, and national health care that enables our foreign competitors to focus on their core business. As a small businessman who can afford health care for my staff, I'm still robbed of countless hours dealing with the bureaucracy of a broken health care system. In the U.S., we're already paying more than enough for a national health care system. We're just not getting it. FDR, I think, said it best. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. I'm a psychology, a former psychology professor, but you don't have to be a psychologist to know that terror is an emotion, not something that's possible to fight. Why not first bomb anxiety if we want to stop terror? <laughs> Al-Qaeda is a real enemy. <laughs> and they have benefited and grown in size as a result of the Bush administration policies. If Al-Qaeda's goal is to stop freedom and democracy, then they have succeeded, as evidenced by the loss of civil liberties, habeas corpus, and vote manipulation by the tactics of Karl Rove and Alberto Gonzalez's replacement attorneys to disenfranchise the votes of African-American soldiers stationed in Iraq by disqualifying them after mail sent to their former address in the states is returned. George Orwell could not have done a better job of writing this story than we now live. We've caused the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Iraqis and thousands of Americans in a war built on bald-faced lies and launched with the assistance of a complicit, uncritical press who is evidenced by the testimony in the Scooter Libby trial was the unquestioning propaganda arm of Bush and Cheney. So why would our leaders take us into this war, from Bush's staff who planned it to Democrats afraid to speak up? In business, I learned that the first rule is to erect barriers to competition. Our business competition is from China and others who need oil to grow. From post-World War II planner George Cannon to current comments from Zbigniew Brzezinski, it's known that control over the Middle East oil means control over the economies of our competition. Iraq has the second largest oil reserves in the world. So while some have said that we want to get to Iraq to get the oil, the reality is that we are there and intend to stay there to control the flow of oil. Supply and demand dictate price, and the profits of oil companies have surged while we pay the price with our loss of freedom, loss of lives, and at the gas pump. The fact is that at Ameri as Americans, our greatest asset and competitive advantage in business has always been our creativity and our ability to innovate. We don't need barriers to competition that leave us with our pants down in an oily desert. From funding research in alternative energy and life sciences to enabling startup businesses to innovate on a level playing field, we must prevent oligarchical practices that want to prevent net neutrality and open competition in the wireless space. Then we can compete in a world economy without having to pay the price of losing freedom and democracy at home in order to erect barriers to competition. If our nationally elected leaders are afraid to stand up for these principles, then we as locally elected officials need to speak louder. To Democrats afraid to speak these impolite truths, I say get out of the way in 2008. To Republicans who would like to see our economy grow, I say invest in skill development for our workforce and create national health insurance so companies can focus on their core business and compete in the world economy.